Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Bright Torrin, and welcome back to Hearts Round 4 as we are playing as the Ottoman Empire. Alright, so to get started in today's episode, I'd like to show you guys the, the factions map mode. You can see where, where all the factions are. There's the common turn here. Got the Brotherhood of Asia against the People's Front, the Commonwealth of Nations, which are the, the former dominions of the British Empire, and then we have the uh, Community of Nations, very similar names. Commonwealth and Community of Nations, and this encompasses Britain and all their territory in Mexico. I don't know if there's anybody else in that. Let's just take a look. See if there's anybody else in that. Yeah, just their, their uh, territory in Malaysia. Alright, so let's go ahead and let it play. We'll be getting Bulgaria here soon. Uh, and Return of Tsar Ferdinand I. Okay, so they brought their Tsar back in here. I think that all has to do with that Romanian. Oh, you know, it could be the Bulgarian. Uh, yeah, it could have been there. Uh, their focus tree. I'm not, I don't know exactly what happens to that Romanian one. And so I think I saw something about France there as well, but I just kind of clicked through it. Maybe it was a different country. I clicked through it pretty quick. Didn't pay attention. Uh, they're not at war with anybody. Oh, yes, they are. Okay, so that's what happened. They attacked the the, the Netherlands, and thus are also fighting the Dutch East Indies. All right, so I'm glad I looked at that. Yeah, they're at war. Okay, so the Dutch are, are not in a faction, uh, and one issue here, although it looks like they've already done a naval invasion, uh, is that they, they don't have a border, so there's going to have to be a, a naval conflict. Now, we can figure that the, the French are going to win that. Yeah, definitely going to win that naval conflict. I didn't know how many ships they had left after their civil war, uh, but yeah, they're still good. Uh, so yeah, they're going to have to do naval invasions in order to get a, get a you know this territory unless they were to attack Belgium. Which they do have a war goal for. So they could just attack Belgium and then march through there. Uh, but yeah, France is now at war. Uh, this is also going to be happening over here. Uh, where, you know, the French do have a base to invade. As do the Dutch have a base to invade each other's territory. So let's we'll see what happens in Asia. Uh, but yeah, you can see war breaking out all across the world now. It's, it's very nice that we're not having... And the French did declare war on Belgium. Okay, so they'll be able to march across their territory and get over there. Though, Belgium's the one making the progress right now. Now, we can't provide volunteers, I don't believe. Let me just double check, because, yeah, if we could provide volunteers, yeah, it'd need to be at 40%. We're at 33% right now. But it says your country's not allowed to send volunteer forces, period. So I think that has to do with that one. Uh, maybe not. I don't think we've gotten that one yet. Okay, so it has nothing to do with the national spirit. We just can't uh, provide volunteers. But, yeah, look at they're making progress here. The French had nobody up on the borders. The French are going to get defeated by the low countries. Uh, wow. Look at that. Look at them go. The French are losing. I don't know what happened. Like, where are all the French troops? Are they over here? No. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Why declare war on Belgium with no troops on the Belgian border? Yeah, they're just rapidly taking their territory. They're about to have Paris. This is ridiculous. Yeah, that's crazy. The French are going to lose. So much for the French Empire. Uh, so we got the Sword Weapons 3. That's funny. Uh, let's go and get something else selected. I'm going to flirt and we're getting this kind of early. Let's go and do it now. It's not that much early. Yeah, we'll go and knock that out. And we can also fill in another one of our military staff. Uh, let's take a look at the Air Force ones. Who do we have here? So we can get air experience gain or the air superiority bonus. We'll do that one. Uh, almost done with the Align Bulgaria. Let's see if we have any decisions over here. Just take a peek, see where we're at on the compliance. 55 and 56 percent. Resistance continues to be reduced. So yeah, we're just doing this the natural way, the slow natural way, rather than spending our stability. Uh, looks like our stability is actually going up right now. All right, nice. And Bulgaria stands defiant. The wicked Bulgarians have refused to bend the knee to our almighty and wise sultan, and have instead elected to go to the way of war. If it is a war the Bulgarians want, then it is a war they shall have. There shall never again be a repeat of 1913. And so that allow us to get the puppet war goal against the Bulgarians, which if we were to go to war with them, I'd probably just annex them. So we do need to select our, our next focus, but yeah, I think uh, that's what we're doing next, is war against Bulgaria, and that's, thus that means war against the Romanians as well. And we'll get the help of the Austrians and the Hungarians and the Germans, so it's going to be a, probably a fairly quick conflict, an easy one. We'll have to see what happens, though. I'm excited to get into a bigger conflict. And, and there's always a chance that they could join a faction as well. Especially with the war, uh, you know, the overall world tension getting higher. Okay, so we have the three choices here. 
I think we should secure Afghanistan, Iraq, and Iran and get down to here and really work on getting that research slot. I think that's that's the best one to get, honestly. Like, this one would be really nice, too, though. Because, you know, our manpower is, is in the dumps. And then just not go down here just yet. You know what? Let's do this one so I can see what those decisions are. Maybe we can even take... I don't think we can take the Greek one yet. Yeah, you know what? We wouldn't be able to take any of them. We can also demand that territory from France because they're losing and they might be willing to do it. And then we can get complete control of Syria. That would be helpful as well. Unless they told us no. You know what? Let's go ahead and do this one, guys. I really think this is the best route to go. And yeah, they all signed it. So they should all get an offer. Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan should all get an offer to join the... the uh, uh, the Central Powers. Now, the Soviet Union is not set to attack down here, but they could still end up going that route. Uh, so that could end up starting the war between us and the Central Powers. Always something to consider once we get these guys in our factions. Uh, in our faction, because I don't think they attack Turkey. Uh, I don't think they have a focus for attacking Turkey. I mean, they might, but it's much further down. I don't, I don't usually see them attack Turkey. But they do attack Afghanistan and, and Iran uh, fairly often. So yeah, we'll have to see what happens there. Yeah, we have the ability to attack the Bulgarians, so let's go ahead and, and do that. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to keep these troops... Yeah, I'm, not, I'm really not all that worried about the Italians, but they could, of course, do something. It's, it's hard to say exactly what will happen here. But if they did get jumpy with us, then we have our allies here. And so they would have a lot to be concerned of with over there. But at the same time, I don't want them getting in here. Yeah, they don't have a war goal against us right now. So I think it's fine to pull these guys off. But then they'll leave these two over here for right now. So yeah, let's bring those ones over here. That'll get us a total of 20 divisions up on this front. And then we're also going to want to, to go ahead and get the planes moved up a little bit closer. We have an airbase there we can make use of. I think that's the only one, though. Yeah, so we'll, we'll move all the planes over to there. We still have these guys training up here. They can train over here, though. So it's going to move them all over to here. Uh, except for the naval bombers. Uh, the naval conflict would be here in the Black Sea, so we might want to move those to a different location. And I don't know if we have any in this stockpile to increase this number. Not enough. Yeah, not enough. Okay, so for right now, so keep them at 25, and we'll move them over here. You know what? That might be the closer airbase to right here. Yeah, you know what? That's probably better. We can move them all over here then. Yeah, let's have them all move over to here. Okay, so they're moving over to there. Let's slow this down a little notch. See if there's anything else we need to do. We have the, yeah, we have the uh, planning bonus there. Getting the troops moving over there. Got the planes going. Uh, the ships. I suppose there's just ships, but I don't think there's anything we need to do with those. Yeah, I think we're good to go. All right, we just need to get the, the planes moved and these troops over to their front. You can see troops coming over here on the border. They are worried about us now having the war goal. We could have declared war immediately and then took some territory there. Yeah, I suppose that's what we'll do. Let's just go and declare war. Uh, you can see that these troops are at least still very weak. All right, so let's get the planes. You know what? We can declare war first and then move all these. Uh, let me see if there's anything to be concerned about besides the Romanians. No. Uh, the Italians do have a non-aggression pact, but that is it. Okay, so yeah, uh, we will call our allies in. And we have declared war on Bulgaria. We can assume that Romania has joined. Yep, and so now Austria-Hungary will invade from that direction. I assume the Germans would also come down to help out in that. And France continues to get their butt kicked over there. Very interesting. Did not expect that to go down that way. All right, so remember the primary area of concern here will be the Black Sea. And so let's... Oops. They don't have an order yet, so that's why they're moving. So we're not going to do an invasion just yet. Maybe, I think we'll just push push across by land, though. I don't think we'll need to do an invasion across here. If we find ourselves any trouble getting across, like the river or whatever, then we'll, we'll change up our stance here. But I don't think we need to do that. Instead, let's just send them on... I don't know if we want to do patrol or strike force. Let's see how we, our, our naval capacity compares to them. Bulgarians don't have any ships. Romanians have a very, very tiny fleet of only destroyers. So yeah, we can search for them. Uh, so yeah, we're going to want to do the the patrol. 
I know this is going to cost a lot of fuel because we have the battle cruiser out there, but that's fine. And then have these guys over here doing the combo raid. And hopefully the fuel will last. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, so we do want to get the planes moved as well. We want the uh, naval bombers to do the naval strikes. Help us out over here. And then we'll have the rest of our planes cover here in the eastern Balkans. Now, we could have some difficulty in the air, so let's do the more ground crews. Because I don't know what the uh, Romanian Air Force looks like. They have a small air force. We should outnumber them. And then, of course, we'll get our allies' assistance as well. All right, so let's go ahead and start attacking now. See where we want to do this, how the best way to go about doing this would be. I should have moved my troops around based on the where they'd be attacking. Because uh, we got mountain troops over here that aren't even attacking in the mountains. But it is what it is, guys. And you know, we're going to push across on both of these fronts here. And then we're going to attack right here as well. All right, at least we can use that mountain troop right there. Uh, also pretty weak right here, so let's see if we can't get into this territory. Yeah, right, we're going to send both of those over there. Austria-Hungary and Germany has agreed to join, as expected. And this tank should be over here. Yeah, I should have moved all my troops around, guys. That was my bad. I didn't really think about that fact that we didn't set these up yet. Germany at war again. And they do want to send us a unleash. Yeah, we'll accept that. Excellent. It's one of the advantages of being at war is that your allies will want to send you unleash. Let's go up here. I would like to go up along the coast here. Uh, you see Romanians have already sent troops down here. We are losing this attack here. All right, that's actually surprising. We'll see if that steps it up. No, it doesn't. Now, we could attack him again. I'm surprised because of the low organization. Let's see with these two, if they can get a win. No. All right, we'll just stop this then. We don't want to take the unnecessary casualties. We're losing all across here. All right, so we'll have to get our wins over here then. That's fine. Now, they actually have some tanks here. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get over there. Uh, we'll probably win here before then, though. All right, let's go over this way. And should be able to move up here relatively easy. And you know, let's go and attack those guys there so they can't support them. Alright, have this guy go this way as well. And yeah, maybe just not fight here in the mountains. I hate how it's really hard to click on the the provinces now when you got units there. So yeah, maybe just avoid fighting in the mountains and hills. We don't really even need to. You just come up behind them this way. Best way to do it and, and avoid casualties, I think. All right, so we're advancing over this way, and we did get our anti-tank upgrade. Okay, uh, so probably do want to get any kind of passive upgrades that we can get right now. Uh, just see if there is anything. Although we are just about 1940, so that's something to consider as well. Is 19, or excuse me, just about in 1941. So might want to get 1941 tax. Let's go and start working on the industrial tax. I think that'd be for the best. Let's get the concentrated industry four. And just make sure there's no decisions to, to be concerned about there. All right, so these troops are coming up this way, and Debarna does look like it would be a, a little bit more difficult to attack. They actually have a full strength division there. Let's get behind them here. I think that's the best way to do this. Continue attacking right there. And yeah, France lost. French Empire has capitulated. <laughs> wow. France was defeated by Belgium and the Netherlands. And so we no longer have a French Empire. It looks like they're completely broken up. Yeah, they lost all of their territory. <laughs> they are now a supervised state of the Netherlands. <laughs> that is great. They've been completely broken up. Everything they could have taken from them, they did have taken from them. So France is basically uh, no longer part of the equation. Uh, Africa is completely broken up. Uh, they lost all their territory here in Asia. Okay, well that's interesting. Who would have expected that? France would get just stomped on. Just absolutely stomped on by the Belgium and the, Le and the Netherlands. Yeah, I'm really surprised with that. Uh, looks like we haven't seen any success up along here. I mean, we're winning all these battles for the most part, but uh, no success against Romania just yet. But it is keeping them distracted. Let's go and attack over here. It's nice slow going, guys. And I like to manually control all of my divisions, if you've never watched my content. Uh, they are moving over to here. 
But how long until they get there? We don't want them to take that territory. What we might want to do is go ahead and send a division over there and make sure that we get there first. We get there one day in 21 hours. I think they might get there before us. One day in 12 hours there. And then this is the guy going there one day in 8 hours. Okay, so that's a problem. See how we might want to do this. We could always move somebody else over there instead. Or we could just attack. And I think that might be the better way to do it. Let's just slow this down just a little bit. And keep our eyes on these guys here. And attack them more towards the last minute. Well, I got 20 hours there. Yeah, we won't be able to attack that guy. They probably will take that, that territory. Uh, I thought we might be able to win this one here. So yeah, we're going to lose one province here. That's okay. As long as we don't let them get too far behind us. Which in that case, since we know we're going to lose here. And there's no way of stopping this unit. He's going to get there no matter what. This is going to redirect them now. Alright, so we have this guy going over this way. And what I think we're going to do is minimize the number of troops here. Because we need them up this way since that's the way we're going. So let's do this uh, this way instead. And then have just the bare minimum troops here. Just enough to like defend... Defend each of these provinces. And that's it. That's I think this is all we're going to leave there. Although I did do that wrong. We want it like so. Yeah, just one division in each province. Uh, we will give them a planning bonus, but... Yeah. I think that's fine. Looks good. Okay. Uh, so, we have been engaging their fleets over here, but I didn't see any actual battles just yet. Alright, so should be able to push forward there. We could have brought this tank over here to stop them. And I could have swore I told that unit to stop moving that way. Is a different unit moving over there? This guy's attacking right there. Okay, so he must have did his own thing. Alright, so let's go ahead and stop that. Alright, so we're not winning right there. We have gotten over to here. Let's go move one unit there. Let's go and stop this. I was hoping to move there quickly. That did not work out. Alright, so let's just move this guy over here. Make sure they don't uh, do anything over here. And yeah, we just don't have enough troops in this area just yet. So we're going to have to wait until we get a few more. They did defeat us there. Okay, well we can push forward. Let me see if we can still get over there. Fight that remaining division. And we are getting a Lend-Lease offer from Austria-Hungary, so we'll accept that. So yeah, pulling back all these troops here, bringing them up over this way so we can focus solely on this front here. And they might do the same, in which case it doesn't really give us any benefit. Yeah, we have gotten there. Excellent. Could go ahead and grab that province right there, but I prefer to go over here. Although, you know what? Let's send the tank unit over there. Or, yeah, we'll have a unit there to support us. We'll send them both. We got the armored operations. Excellent. Remember, we want to leave two of these open, uh, which, yeah, shouldn't be a problem. Let's go and get the supply consumption one, one of the main benefits of that branch. Okay. See if there's anything needs to be done up along here. Doesn't look like it. All right, so the, the tank unit, I want him to go over there and help. This guy here will, will do the defense. Uh, what we might want to go ahead and do is attack these guys to end this this attack here. Maybe not with him, though. Maybe with one of these guys instead. Yeah. Just to try and help out on that defense. It's just about done. We've already taken that. We just can't get there because of these guys here. So let's go and try and attack with them. Let's pull this back here. Let's send this guy forward. And just trying to help out on the defense. It looks like we're now going to lose. They got too many units over there. Alright, just weren't quick enough, unfortunately. Alright, so let's go and pull that back then. Alright, so we kind of got to wait for our allies up here a little bit then. Because, yeah, we are kind of uh, stymied here. So let's send another division over there. Make sure we don't lose that hard won province. And might go and attack them there. I'm kind of letting them sit on defense here. Uh, but one negative of doing that is that they're able to push forward here. Now, I'm actually fine with them going into Greek territory. If they want to go this way and then leave their own territory open, then I'm okay with that. They want to push over here, we get really need no consequences besides losing the factories and such that are over here. But I'll sacrifice those to be able to get Bulgaria 1 uh, defeated quickly. So yeah, if they want to push over that way, I'm okay with it. I almost want to just pull the divisions back and bring them over here. Uh, but I figured we'd leave some to defend there. In fact, you know what, let's go ahead and give them one more division for defending the mountains. And then what we'd do is kind of like defend in somewhere really, really easy here. And they can have all this. I'm okay with that. 
Anything gets less troops over here uh, defending this territory is a, a benefit for us. Uh, it does look like they might take that promise there. Uh, so we might have to do an attack here. Just kind of help out. Try and see if we can't push them back here. And just help out on that defense. Uh, these are all going well. All the territory I care about is going well. And, and we might even leave this one here if we lose all this. We we'll probably back out here. Now I do want this guy to go ahead and retreat over to here. So he can get onto that front where I want him. And the Romanians are just about defeated, so it looks like our allies will be invading across there. Overall, we did not do as much. We didn't uh, help out as much as, as I'd hoped. Yeah, you can see here we, we were losing. The Romanians, what happened is the Romanians pumped too many troops down here. Like, look at, they have a total of, what, five? It's eight, nine, thirteen. Thirteen, and there's another one. I don't know, that might, might have been counted, though. So, yeah, they sent thirteen divisions down into Bulgaria and then didn't defend their own territory enough. And so they lost here where they might have been able to hold off for a little while, but instead they pumped all their troops down to Bulgaria, which did result in us having no progress here because we were outnumbered. Uh, but it just resulted in them getting conquered. So, yeah, it was kind of silly. It did stymie our efforts, though, so that was unfortunate. Yeah, we were, weren't really able to do much here because because of uh, the large number of troops. I don't want these guys attacking here. Hey, I think we're just going to end up letting our allies, um, you know, expand here and get all this, this taken. Yeah, I don't want to take any casualties if we can avoid it. And you know what? Let's go ahead and pull this back as well. Get these guys out of here. Again, they can have all that. Just trying to avoid casualties because of our our manpower issues. Now, I don't know that Bulgaria has to be defeated. I think just Romania has to be defeated. Uh, yeah, because Bulgaria is, you know, is a, uh, a puppet. So they just have to defeat them in Romania, which, despite having most of their land, they haven't gotten the capital just yet. I don't think so. They're uh, only 27% towards capitulation. Looking at the casualties, guys. So we killed 26.1 thousand in Romania, and we killed 15.6 thousand for the Bulgarians, while taking 15 thousand casualties ourselves. Uh, so overall, I mean, if you just look against the Bulgarians, we have a 2.0 kill death ratio, so so really good. That's that's solid. And then against the Romanians, 8.4 thousand to uh, 26 thousand. Yeah, that's even way, way better kill death ratio, guys. It's like over a 3.0 kill death ratio. So yeah, I mean, we we did great when it comes to casualties. That's what I want to see. Uh, I want to see good kill death ratios. 21% uh, total war participation. So I mean, we did. Uh, we were involved in it. Uh, you know, we might not look like it because we didn't really take much territory. We only took a few provinces. But yeah, uh, we we played a role. We did well in the kill-death ratio. Everything I want to see, guys. So I'm actually quite pleased so far with the, the way the conflict has gone. As long as we keep the casualties low, I'm happy. Could advance uh, and actually help here, but I don't see any reason to. Let's let our organization get back up. Get our troops moved around, all that kind of good stuff. I suppose we could defend that one if we wanted to. Extend this out a little bit. We might even be able to win there, in fact. But they are sending another division over there. But yeah, the Romanians just really focused on our front, which was strange. Alright, so now they're attacking us all across here, which is good. We get to, uh, to kill more of their troops. And yeah, and I wonder why they're not closing it up. There they go. They're closing it up now. Alright, let's go and attack them here. Make sure they're not able to do that, since I've decided I'm not going to let you have that province. It's my province. Uh, they are able to move here without having to fight anybody. And you know what? I'm actually okay with them moving right there. Because then we can quickly cut them off. So you know what? Let's let them go there. And we'll get them cut off and then try and destroy them. As long as nobody moves from here, so we'll want to pay attention to that. But you know what? Let's let them move there. I think they're both moving. Yeah. Although they do get there in different times. So that's going to result in them changing up their priorities here. This guy's got two days till he gets to the next province. How about this guy here? Okay, so we got plenty of time. There we go. Now what we want to do is have these troops here. Whichever one can get there first. Two days and four hours, one day and six hours, one day and eight hours. So we'll have him go there. He should be able to beat this guy. Yeah, he'll be able to beat them there. And then as soon as they're cut off, we'll want to attack them with these two units here. And we should have plenty of time. Yeah, we got time. All right, so we're going to try and get those two divisions destroyed. Hopefully that works out well. And we also won there, so let's go and push forward here. And we won in all our defenses here as well. Excellent. 
Uh, I think we're going to go and try and attack somewhere. Might be able to defeat that guy there. Let's try sending those three in. Yeah, we got to get a win there. We could probably get a win over here, too, as soon as we finish up with that defense. All right, so yeah, just kind of keep my eye over here, making sure that this goes well for us. Just little tiny maneuvers when you play as a minor power. This is, ah, damn it. I get to do it. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> I was hoping to, to make that happen. So I, I don't really want to actually puppet them. We can puppet them for very cheap, but I would prefer to, to take their territory rather than puppeting. I'd rather annex them. Uh, but that's going to be a lot more expensive, so we might not be able to do as much. We can annex all of Bulgaria, which I'm, I'm happy with. It looks like we can even annex some of Romania. We have enough points. Did, were they not interested in doing anything? Did they just like give it up to us? Because yeah, we'll take this one here. That gives you uh, two civilian factories and one military factory. But I really want to get the oil there. We'll have to see if we have the points or not. We can take this one here as well. That will result in a weird border though. I mean, I guess it's fine. I mean, it looks better like this. You could technically take that, though. That'd be an additional five factories if we did. But again, it's kind of a weird situation, uh, border-wise, if we take it. But you know what? We need as much territory, as many factories as possible. I think that war indicated that. As you can see, we have such a small, tiny army here. And then having to defend the multiple fronts also causes issues, so you can't use your entire entire army. So yeah, I think we're going to take that uh, and just hope I can get this one too. I don't think I will be able to. I expect they're going to probably do something in the next one. Though, I think they're giving up all their points. So maybe we can annex all this. Question is, do we want to annex it all? Or do we want to create like a little Romanian uh, puppet state here? That'd be a, a option. Well, we can't take anything else. We can take that one. But yeah, I don't want to do that because that could create a situation where our borders don't connect. So let's just go and end our turn here. We'll take all that. And yeah, it looks like we can take this one here. So at the very least, I'd want to annex that. So now we have the question of do we want to, to annex this and then puppet the rest of Romania, which would allow them to continue on their focus tree and, and, and you know maybe build the territory up further. And you know, we're not going to be able to get, you know, because we're in the alliance with Austria Hungary, we wouldn't be able to get any of this territory here, so you get kind of a weird situation border wise. So it might just be better to have a Romanian front here. But one benefit is, you know, we get all the use of this territory here. And we can always annex Romania later. Uh, though we can't even take this. We ended the past once, at least, maybe even a couple times. In order to get that taken. Yeah, we just don't have enough points. There we go. So yeah, we could go ahead and enter turn here. And then yeah, we could just puppet them. Uh, puppet the Romanians. It might look better border-wise, is what I'm saying. And they get to keep their fleet. They make better use of their manpower. And they can continue going down their focus tree to build this territory up for when we do finally annex them. Which we'd have to build here anyway, build the fortifications up along here for against the Soviets. And so in that case, you know, we, we should be able to annex them pretty easily because we've already built in their territory. So yeah, that would be an option. However, I think we need to annex all the territory. I'm not sure if it considers puppets uh, for those one Ottoman Empire decisions, which I don't know if there is one for up here. But that's something to consider. You know, we can always we can always annex them later. So I think we are going to create a Romanian puppet here. Yeah, I think that's the best way to do it for right now. Uh, though we don't have enough points, so we might have to pass a couple times. So yeah, I think we're going to create a Romanian puppet, and then we're going to give them all this territory. Now, we could create a different puppet, but only Romania has a core in all this territory. So yeah, let's go and create the puppet for Romania, and then all future territory would be taken for them, so it should be at least cheaper. You know what, let's just pass a few times, so that we try and get it all for them. And one shot here. All right, so that should be everything. And now we have the Kingdom of Romania as a, a subject of us. And they sh probably lost their troops, their divisions, yeah, because they capitulated. So they don't have their divisions, but they can rebuild up their divisions. They should also have their fleet. And if they had any planes, looks like they don't have any planes in here. They get to keep their eight destroyers, though. So, I mean, that's something. And we can always annex them a little bit later in the future. 
So now we have a united front here for when we go to war with the Soviets, of course, after they finish up their war against Poland and their allies. All right, excellent. So yeah, I like the I like the situation here. I think it looks better too. It looks better than if we had conquered it and it would have it just looks kind of strange. All right, so now that the war's done, and again, didn't take too many casualties. That's, that wasn't too bad, less than 20,000. Uh, didn't really help that much in the war overall, though. Despite our, our decent war score, a lot of that was because of the, the casualties we took and the few little bit of provinces that we took. Uh, but overall, a big part of that, the reason why we won that was because of our assistance for our allies. I think we would have won eventually. Uh, I would have never started the war, though. Uh, and the way we would have won is naval invasions. We would have had to use naval invasion across the Black Sea to take their key provinces because we couldn't have won down here, I don't think. Not without more forts to sit on the defense and burn off manpower. We're just too outnumbered. Um, but I would have never started the war against Bulgaria and Romania. Bulgaria is not a problem, but Romania was certainly uh, together. They were a problem. I would have never started that war if we didn't have uh, the allies to assist us. Just to make that clear, I don't think we would have... Uh, done well enough in that war by ourselves so i guess we want to move the these troops around who's the next conflict going to be against let's just take a look in our our tree here because yeah, i don't actually know uh where we get their next claim and so that's where we're going to want to put our our troops on see i don't get any claims here you know you're just getting them as as uh hubbits though somebody told me this doesn't work properly that when it sends the offer off, that uh, something that you never get a notification about them accepting it or, or, or declining it or anything, and then they just don't become your subjects. So hopefully that's not that's not the case, because that'd be a bummer. Because one reason why I'm kind of okay going this route is because we can eventually annex them. But not if they're just an ally. If they're not a subject, then we can't do that. So I'm hoping that's not broken. I don't know, though. Yeah, I'm not seeing any claims coming up anytime soon, guys, until this one here. And, and then you can uh, go after Great Britain, France, and Italy. And this allows you to go after the Japanese. So I guess the Italians would be the next war, unless... Well, you know what? We could try and get a, a war goal. Yeah, we could justify a war goal very soon. 50% is when, what we had to wait for for the world tension. So yeah, I suppose the wars would be over here then, against these smaller countries. That's who we'd pick on. Maybe go after Macedonia next? Uh, though they are subject... Oh, okay, so are all these subjects of... Uh, yeah, okay, so Yugoslavia isn't completely broken apart, technically, because these are all still you know subjects of Yugoslavia. They just have autonomy now. All right, interesting. So we'd have to go to war with all of them then. Uh, I think that's the next border we should we should be concerned about, uh, unless the Italians do something. Uh, but as of right now, there's nothing to you know indicate that. So you know, let's go ahead and put the the troops on this border here. And we don't want to go all the way across it. We want to only be on our own territory here. So put them all over here. Uh, we will have a, a few troops here, just a few, temporarily defending here. Just in case something happens. Probably not going to. I don't think the, the Italians will declare war on us, but you never know. So put the 18 divisions here for now. Just kind of get a, a line so they'll get a planning bonus. And go ahead and, and pull all of our, our ships and, and planes off of their orders. Let's have them go back and port here. All right. Uh, and then the sh the planes, we'll probably want them to train. I doubt they got... Yeah, they did not get enough experience to not have to be trained. So let's go ahead and, and do the pilot exercises again. And I'm going to take a look and see if we can increase the size of any of these. Nah, not quite yet. Okay. Uh, not a lot of manpower here, guys. Uh, I'm wondering if we shouldn't go ahead and start taking these decisions for the manpower. Because, yeah, that was uh, an issue. We didn't even take very many casualties, but yet we still have lower manpower. Let me just see. I know we have some decisions that are going to increase the manpower. This is not the best one. I think the 75 one is the one that we want to do. Weekly manpower plus 2,500 for the fundamentalism. Okay, so that's where that modifier come from. Okay. Uh, they're going to cancel our lend lease with us since we're no longer at war. We did get all the equipment from those troops as well, from the, those countries. So that helped out. But now manpower is the problem. Yeah, we really don't have any <laughs> manpower. Uh, so that's the reason why as soon as we get that 75 little power we're going to do... Oh, and Finland just joined the Central Powers, too. I forgot that they, they do that. And so with that, we'll have another front the Soviets will have to fight on. So they're going to have to fight on the main European front here against us. Uh, then they'll have to fight on the one against us in, in uh, Turkey. I guess you could say in the, you know, the Caucasus region. 
And then, you know, you have the, the Finnish front as well, the Winter War. Okay, interesting. We do have military factories. We'll probably get these assigned. We just got them sitting there. Uh, let's see what we're, we're most short on. Anti-tanks and anti-air are pretty bad. I think that's one of those were what the Germans or the Austrians were giving us. Yeah, those seem to be the ones that we're in the worst situation with. So let's go ahead and have them build that so we can get all these shortages. And that's also was affecting our, our divisions. As you know, I, I pulled out an infantry here and put the anti-air and anti-tank, but they never got those equipment yet. So uh, we do have equipment for making adjustments, excuse me, uh, experience for making adjustments too. So might wanna go ahead and do that. Uh, though I think we were working on the other ones first. Yeah, we wanna get these tanks done. Although we don't have self-propelled artillery yet, so we can't put those in there. So we'll have to wait. Uh, but we can start filling out them here. Same thing with the mountain troops. And since we have more in the mountain troops, might wanna start there. And the mountain troops aren't even done yet. Okay, that's interesting. So we might want to go ahead and get more mountain troop battalions in here then before we even get them anything else. Try and get them up to, to 20 width, although it doesn't look like that's an option due to having few too few divisions. So we can't support them, as you see here. Put us over the special forces limit. So we'll just have to get them up to 16 for now. And I suppose we can go in and, and put some of the some of the support stuff in there. And that'll be the 30, the 30 experience we have, make the mountain troops better overall. Okay, we can go ahead and turn this back up uh, to speed five, though. Yeah, it looks like the world tension, oh, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say it's going up. It's going down now. Damn, I was hoping to uh, to be able to justify a war goal here. World tension needs to get to 50%. We do get those mountain, uh, the mountain bonus there, so that's gonna help for those, those Alpine troops. And we are in 1941 as well, uh, so probably want to go and work on 1941 industrial tax because equipment is still an issue. And we are repairing with civilian factories. That's, oh, well, I guess we're not quite. We're working on building two civilian factories. We now have enough for almost two full lines. And then once we have those done, then we will have enough if we're not trading them, of course, which as of right now, we're, we don't need to trade for any more. So I guess we can go and work on the military factories, though I think the, yeah, the rubber is still kind of an issue. So let's get one more synthetic refinery. I think that'd be wise. And we'll get over here in this 50%. All right, excellent. So yeah, at this point, we're just waiting for the 50% uh, world tension so we can invade into Yugoslavia. That's what I'd like to do next. Let's go and get this territory conquered. Uh, though, there's also Syria because they're no longer part of the, uh, they're no longer part of France. So we'd want to get them conquered too. And they won't be joining the faction and so that creates an issue here where they're the only neutral state. Well, I guess you also have Lebanon. Lebanon. So we'd want to go into Syria and Lebanon. I suppose would be the next. Yeah. Okay. So whatever. It doesn't matter which way we go. The point is that we got to wait till it gets to 50% where we can do anything anyways. Uh, we do have another military factory. So it's going to get this assigned. Uh, we already have the two going into the anti-tank and anti-air. We got, we're pretty good on the, uh, Support equipment, though, that's going to become more of a problem as we continue to to build and change up our division designs. Air Force is not great, so we can always put more more into that. Because right now, the thing limiting us on building troops is our incredibly low manpower, which we're going to do something about that here in a minute. So, yeah, let's instead, let's get more light tanks. We do not have enough. We have good motorized. I think we got that from the enemy after defeating them. So it's going to build more light tanks. Because, yeah, manpower is, is the main issue now. Uh, so let's go into the decisions here and do the fidelity. Get the weekly manpower up 2,500. Just kind of build that up some. Okay, so this happens with that branch of the, the British focus tree. So they end up having essentially civil wars that start up over here. And usually the Imperialist side will then join the uh, the British faction if they have one. And so yeah, this is going to happen in every country. So we'll see it in, obviously it's happened in New Zealand now, we'll see it in Australia as well. And we'll see it in Canada. Now, I don't know about South Africa though. I don't know if I've ever seen it happen in South Africa, maybe. I can't recall. I would assume it happens there as well though. Uh, so we have done this here. And thus they have all joined the faction. Uh, so Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan are all now in the Central Powers. 
creating even more fronts for the Soviets to worry about. So essentially the Soviets are almost completely surrounded on this frontier, and we don't know that they have any friendlies over here at all. So they might even have to wor still worry about that eastern front, despite the fact that, you know, they have some communists over here now. We'll take a look at that conflict here in a minute in Asia. We haven't seen that in a while. But yeah, now the central powers surround them even more so. This is not good for them. Not good at all. So we have more friends. Uh, let's go ahead and... Can we not do this one yet? Oh, we have to do one of these two. Yeah, we have to have one of these two before we can. But this one has no effect. It really should be bypassed. Yeah, that's weird because France doesn't have anything here. You gotta get that one to get the, the doctrine bonuses, though. But you know, we'll go to this one next since it actually has an effect. Uh, yeah, that's that's weird. I guess there's no France. That should be bypassed if there's no France. That's so ridiculous. That's silly. Uh, clearly, somebody needs to catch that. Uh, we don't need to do the military parade in Romania right now. Uh, they might actually have pretty good non aligned support, anyways. At 57% right now. And. Just getting the notification about them all joining the Central Powers. And Great Britain allies with Imperious New Zealand Imperial Loyalist. We did get our uh, research for the next light tank done, so we want to update those. And let's go ahead and get the light self-propelled self artillery. Jesus. Tough word to say, apparently. Uh, get those so that we can put them into the divisions. And uh, get those light tanks updated. We might need to train up some of the troops. Yeah, we could train some of them. And, you know, we really need the experience as well. And now the problem isn't manpower. Or, excuse me, the problem isn't equipment. It's manpower. So there's no reason we can't can't train these guys up. You know, actually, let's train the whole army up. We'll train the whole army for military experience. Army experience, to be exact. And also just, just get the troops we recently changed. Get those guys' uh, experience up to the to the next level. I could put the fleet out there, but we're going to let the fuel... Yeah, we're going to let the fuel go up as much as possible. So the Germans are and the Austrians are coming over here to help cover all these borders. Are we looking at a war with the Soviets soon? Because I should be prepared for that. Uh, they're working on rake the Anglo-French colonial hegemony. So what exactly does this one do? Let's just take a peek here. So they're going to go into to Africa. And also into to Asia. And this will give them a war goal against Britain and France. So we might find ourselves at war. You know, obviously France is, is you know, a puppet. So if they went to war with France, and that would bring the Netherlands in. As well as uh, maybe Belgium. You know what? They're not all on alliance, so that would not bring Belgium in. Let me just double check here. No, there's no alliance here. So yeah, if you attacked France, you would also go to war with the Dutch. As well as the Dutch East Indies. So... If they attack the French, then it's, it'll be a little bit larger conflict. But of course, attacking the British would result in that whole faction going to war. So you could see uh, us invading Mexico as a, as a potential possibility, and that's if they use it. I really hope they go after the Italian coup soon, so we don't have to worry about Italy anymore. Uh, this would let them attack Belgium and Luxembourg, so they can just attack the whole lunch, low countries anyways. All right, so that's currently what they're working on. So we'll have to see how that develops. Working on tanks. Don't know what the Soviets are working on. Uh, British are doing air rearmament. Because we can let this play now. Can't really see what most of these countries are working on. They're supporting Rock Island here. Privatization in Canada. Or, excuse me, in Mexico. Canada's working on National Steel Car. Okay. Nothing that really concerns us here. Now we'll just continue training up and getting ready uh, for the next conflict. Uh, which would, again, could be anywhere. Just really depends on... Uh, where we want to attack. We kind of have a choice here. I kind of want to get this one wrapped up. I'd like to, yeah, I kind of would like to get this territory all done before we go into Syria. I think that would be the better route to do this. Uh, so we've got the light self-propelled artillery. That was not uh, very long. Didn't take very long to get that. Uh, before I forget, let me, let me go ahead and get this building now because I'm going to forget, guys. You already know. Uh, so we're going to put... Whenever we get a new factory, you put it into that. We could also pull from the motorized, because we do have a bit of motorized. Yeah, I suppose we'll pull from the motorized, and we can just put the next factory into that. And that way we have the light self-propelled artillery at least building right now. And then what we'd want to do is go ahead and just add those into the tanks now. Light self-propelled artillery. Uh, we won't pull anything out just yet. 
because we're still only at 19. It won't be until the next time we don't pull something out. So let's go and save that. And go ahead and get something researched over here. Could you continue with the industrial tax? Let's see if there's anything over here we might want to get. Could get the uh, the next line of that. Could also continue here for more passive bonuses. And maybe we should do that. Get more passive bonuses. Yeah, I already have two of our, our research slots going to the industrial focus. So that's what we'll do. Um, or we could even get the, the next anti-tank so we can get those building. That'd probably make more sense, especially because we have three factories going towards that right now. Let's take a look at the compliance here. 62% and 62%. So as soon as those get to 70%, guys, we'll be able to core that territory. Uh, we would need the, the Pluto power as well, of course. Now, Germany just declared war on Cameroon. Okay, so... That will not likely, yeah, they're gonna continue to expand and get in territory. They're gonna get some colonies. Oh, I was gonna say that won't likely cause any, uh, any great conflicts, but that is not wrong because they just declared war, or that is not correct, uh, because they just declared war in the Commonwealth of Nations by declaring war in South Africa. Yeah, it just feels like that is not the thing we should be most concerned about is Africa here, but yep, of course, Wilhelm II has gotta go get territories in Africa. It makes sense that that's what he would do. He, uh, he needs he needs colonies. So, again, the old man here is is uh, just not doing the most sensible thing. Uh, but whatever. Uh, they, I guess they're easy to conquer. The problem here is that the Commonwealth of Nations brings in Canada, Australia, New Zealand. So it just uh, brings us in a bunch of theaters I don't feel like we need to be in. If they ask us to support this, I don't see why we would. Although being at war might let us get some stuff here that we haven't been able to get just yet. We're still on partial mobilization. But you know what? I don't know if they'd have enough. Yeah, I don't think they'd have enough of the, the factories to, to be able to, to get the, the war factories. And of course, those two will now join uh, the, the Commonwealth of Nations. Oh! And Germany declared war on France, too, which means that they're now at war with the Dutch. And uh, France actually is defending the Maginot Line, if it still exists. It does. I don't know if it got torn apart in that war or anything. So the rest of these are not puppets. All right, so yeah, it's just uh, France and the Dutch. But again, it doesn't benefit, benefit us at all because Syria is no longer under France, so we can't even expand that way. But we might be able to change up our, our laws by accepting this. And I suppose we could do that. Now, one issue though, hmm, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm glad I thought about this. One issue is if we to, if we were to um, join this conflict, if we were to attack anybody, you know, like for instance, Yugoslavia, or we were to attack Syria, then there's a chance that they might join one of these factions we're at war with. Now, the Dutch don't have a faction, so we don't have to worry about that. But we'd, we'd also be joining, because if we, we accept the call to arms, we're not going to pick which conflict we're joining. Now, we can contact them and um, pick which one we want to join in. So we could always do that. But as far as, like, joining all their conflicts, again, I think what would happen is that whoever we attack would join the Commonwealth of Nations, which means we wouldn't be able to like actually annex any of this territory we attack to try and take. We wouldn't be able to annex it in a peace treaty until all the major countries are defeated. Uh, and the at the very least, the leader of the Commonwealth of Nations is Canada, which means you have to go across the sea and defeat Canada before you can annex anything. So, you know what? I really don't think we should. Uh, we shouldn't accept this, that's for sure. Maybe we can like, we could accept war with, you know, the, the countries that are not in a faction, but even that might go against us because if they join the faction, which they might. So I think we should stay out of it, guys. And, th and there's no real benefit to it, to it for us. Yeah, we get nothing from, from joining, and they did join the Commonwealth of Nations. So yeah, all of them have joined Belgium and the Dutch, and thus the, the Dutch's, uh, you know, their puppets in France and the Dutch East Indies are also in the Commonwealth now. What's interesting about that is I think yeah, the, the community of nations is, is at war with the Commonwealth of Nations, which means more conflict over here. Yeah, that means the Dutch East Indies could conquer all the British territory here. So yeah, this is actually really bad for Britain. 
it did not go well. Um, and, and then I also forgot about the, the situation here with Belgium. Yeah, because now Belgium has this territory. Yeah, this is an interesting situation. You have a three war, a three-way war right now. Let me just right-click those. So yeah, you have a three-way war right now between the Commonwealth of Nations, uh, the Community of Nations, and the Central Powers. Though there is the fact that the Community of Nations is not at war with the Central Powers right now. Very interesting situation, guys. Uh, Mexico finally finished up their civil war. Took them long enough. Probably had some British. Uh, support with that as well. And yeah, I think the Central Powers will win on this. Yeah, and I, I just don't know what um, what advantage we gain from joining this. We, we can send troops over there, but then we can't do what we want to do. And world tension is high enough now. Uh, so you know what? I think we should just... And now, given they couldn't end up joining a faction anyway. But maybe not. If they're just at war with us and we don't bring in our allies, then they might not join a faction. So I guess the question is, who do we want to fight without our allies? Because I was going to invade over here. But they do have a lot more troops over here than like if we were to fight just Syria. Yeah, you're looking at a very similar number of divisions as we do, if, if not more. Yeah, because then you count all their subjects. So we'd probably be outnumbered over here. Yeah, we'd be outnumbered if we attacked them. So what might be better is just to go to war against Syria and pick on the little guy. <laughs> yeah, I think we might do that. Just if I war go against them and, and go pick on Syria. And I don't think we have to expect any conflict from them here. So we could just send all the troops over here. Now, is it necessary to send all the troops over here? No. So maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> we should just send what's needed. Which, I don't know how many they have. I don't think we can we can see that yet. Yeah, we can't quite see how many troops they have. Maybe they just have zero because they were just created. So you know what? You could probably do this really quickly. And just take a couple divisions. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Just create a couple divisions, put them over here. Don't even uh, pull them all off. If you don't have to, no reason to. Uh, there are some mountains, so we'll send a, a mountain division. Yeah, let's just take um, any of the doubles here. And we do want to change up the, uh, the front here. All right, get uh, one mountain trip over here. Get that tank coming over here too for for the speed. So we get this done nice and quickly. And I guess we can take. Okay, so he's assigned over there. So let's take. Uh, we'll just take both of these guys actually. And put them over here. All right, we'll leave him over there so he can continue training. So we currently have seven divisions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, obviously, we don't even need that many, frankly. Let's take one more. But we're going to do that. We're going to send over eight just to get this done nice and quick. So that's who we'll attack. We do need to actually start justifying a Wurgle. Uh, we'll go after Aleppo here. It's 135 days, 27 political power. All right, excellent. So yeah, we'll attack Syria. Pick on the little guy. Just get another front dealt with, because as you can see, we're mostly surrounded by, uh, you know, by the, the central powers, but we do have this front down here. So I figure we might as well get that wrapped up. Now, I don't think Syria would join anybody. They'll probably stay neutral if it wasn't for uh, us attacking them. Now, with us attacking them, they might. They might join a faction. Uh, Netherlands has capitulated. All right, so now they're invading France. Though, I want to say that's all they have to defeat. Yeah, they defeated Netherlands, they defeated Belgium. Uh, you would think that because France is a subject, that they wouldn't have to defeat them. It could be wrong on that front. I guess we could look at that if we wanted to. Look at the current wars, and that would be... Ooh. Is it this one here? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's this one here. Uh, so just looking at who all they have to defeat, it seems like that's it. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right, because of, uh, I forgot that they joined the faction. So they won't be able to finish this war up until they invade Canada. <laughs> but at least there's not really a navy on that side of the conflict. So, yeah, they might be able to, to get it done. Uh, they might be able to get the invasion done. But yeah, just rolling over everybody over there. Uh, so we did get the concentrated industry. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and go after, we're going to go after the advanced rubber processing, because I know we are kind of short on the, the rubber here. 
Uh, and it looks like we need steel. Damn, that's a shame. I don't really want to trade for more steel, but whatever. We'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we could, we do have that building, so I suppose we don't need the the rubber one, but we'll, we'll go in and get it. Uh, we'll need it in the future as we we uh, build more and more planes. Uh, but yeah, we don't need to repair these, so let's go in and get some more military factories built. I think that's what we should get. Now we will want to get a line of forts here for when we fight the Soviets. Hopefully that doesn't happen uh, anytime soon because we're not quite ready for that. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and build some military factories because we need more, more military factories. Like three more here. I'm gonna keep our eye on these these Soviets, these wily Soviets, and and our own allies. Uh, they're working on the repair of the Italian coup. Okay, that would be nice. We don't have to worry about Italy anymore. Though technically, if I'm being honest, I'd prefer to fight Italy. Paris has fallen again. When do we get this done? Let's just take a peek. Uh, the 7th of August. Uh, but unfortunately, we'll only be able to go through this month here. Alright, so these troops do not need to be training anymore. But we'll keep them training until we get closer to the conflict. And we did finish up our focus. Alright, excellent. Let's go and see what we want to get next. I suppose we'll do this here, though I really hope it works. Yeah, because there's no guarantee that it's gonna. But I really want to get the research slot at the very least, so we'll go ahead and grab that. And uh, we are now the Ottoman Empire. Alright, so we only had to do that to become the Ottoman Empire, and now we're green instead of red. Okay. So now I can correctly say that we're the Ottoman Empire. Uh, we did get those decisions unlocked, I want to take a look at those. And I guess we won't get to, and I said uh, we'll get to the next month here. I think I said August. I meant uh, get through April. But yeah, we're not going to do that. We're just going to look at what these new decisions are. Which is this one right here. And yeah, this allows us to, to get cores in all these territories. But in order to get them, you have to hold and to control. Okay, so you don't have to actually own it. You only have to control it to get the core. Well, that's cool. All right, I wasn't aware of that. So that changes things a little bit. Makes it a little bit easier to do things. So yeah, just by conquering Syria, we'll build a core Syria automatically, so that makes Syria even more worth it than you'd think, because you can core it. Yeah, we, we can't get any of the rest of this just yet. We just don't own enough of the territory. All right. So yeah, uh, we'll leave these where they'll be checked as soon as we're able to take them, we will. That'll give us a core on that territory. And uh, no other decisions available, nothing else to do. That's all we're going to do for today's episode. Next episode, we will be declaring war in Syria, which remember, we get that on the 7th of August. Uh, so we'll invade them. Next episode, get them conquered real quick, and then I suppose after that we'd want to go after Lebanon. We'd want to, to start justifying the war goal on Lebanon as soon as we're done with, with the war goal on Syria, so that we'll be close to being done with it by the time we wrap up Syria, and then we can invade them next. We don't want to do them at the same time, though, because remember, for every one you do, it takes longer uh, for every one that you have happening simultaneously. So it's just better to wait to do that. So yeah, we'll attack Syria next episode and just see what happens with the craziness of the world. I never look at the situation over here. It looks like the communists are, are losing from what I'm seeing. Yeah, it does appear that the communists are, are losing. Uh, but yeah, we're going to end it here. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next one. And thanks for watching.